on YouTube. You're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. All right, for nearly six months now, and I have no qualms in saying this, I've been the proud owner of a 2003 VY Holden Commodore Acclaim Series 1 with the ever-reliable and pretty much indestructible LN3 L36 3.8-litre Ecotec V6 engine, coupled up to one of the most reliable transmissions Holden ever used, and that's the 4L60E four-speed automatic. Now, I've said this before, Okay, when it comes to four-wheel drive vehicles, it's Toyota Land Cruiser or nothing as far as I'm concerned. But when it comes to the good old Aussie four-door family car, or family sedan or whatever have you, or the family station wagon for want of a better term, again, it's the Holden Commodore. I was brought up in Holden Commodores. I have loved Holden Commodores my entire life, and I can now say I'm the proud owner of one. Last week, I got an email from a good mate of mine saying, hey, old mate, why don't you update your viewers on how things are going with the Commo? And I thought, well, I actually haven't done an update video on how things are going with the Commo, really, have I? However, as we all know, some of the pitfalls with owning a second-hand car is things can go wrong. And whilst the vast majority of the Commodore is working really well, there are some things, though, that, well, let's face it, when you get a driveline warranty, not everything in that driveline is covered. Unfortunately, last week, one of those things that's not co covered, I'll get it out, not covered in the driveline warranty, let go on me. So for this video, let me give you an update on how things are going with a good old Aussie Holden Commo. Correction, good old Aussie Holden Commodore. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It's not a bad idea. I haven't actually given you guys an update on the commo, really, have I? But last week I got an email from a good friend of mine to say, hey, you know, why don't you give your viewers an update on how things are going with the Commodore? So I thought, well, I may as well. However, the apparent driveline warranty that I got with the vehicle doesn't cover a lot of things. Didn't cover the radiator, didn't cover the thermostat, doesn't cover any of the hoses. That'd be right. However, I do have one thing that's finally died on me, and that is due to what I believe occurred late last year, unfortunately. And that is the AC's finally packed up. Great. So luckily at the moment here in Victoria, it's not exactly hot at the moment. Last week it was. Unfortunately, the AC let go last week. What's happened is... And I'll say this because if I don't mention this, I'll get people commenting say, why are you talking about things I know about? With a VY, right, you have your AC condenser in the front and then obviously your radiator behind it. Late last year, I was driving up a road here in uh, Geelong, St Albans Road, and for viewers here in Geelong, near the Gordon, and I hit a magpie, drove straight across the front of me and got the condenser. Now, I didn't realise the actual damage, but there was blood and guts and everything up the bonnet as well. I hit it hard. I was doing 60... I was doing 63, 64 k's an hour. Now, for those for those people who live in Melbourne and or viewers here in Geelong, we know that that part of St Albans Road is littered with cops all the time. Luckily, this time it wasn't. And I hit that bird hard. And we noticed when I had to replace the radiator, there was a fairly nasty dent in the condenser. Well, what I think's happened is that dent has caused a crack in one of the pipes and I've lost all the reefer. All the R134A has leaked out because I happened to notice last week a little puddle of yellow reefer oil. There's no gas, which means I'm up for a new condenser. Now, we'll go out of the commo in a minute, but Essentially, I'm going to get a second-hand condenser in good condition. That's going to save me a bit of money. And a dryer for it, a receiver dryer, they're only about, I think they're about $25 or $30. Odd. Um, I'm not going to fit them. I'll get either my local mechanic to do it, who does things I can't do, or I'll take it to the AC, HVA, Auto HVAC slash Auto Elect Company here in Geelong that are pretty damn good. 
Apart from that, everything else on the commo has been fantastic. Um, Economy-wise, with what I do for a living, <coughs> I'm averaging about 11 litres per 100k. I'm getting nearly 530 kilometres off a tank of 91. Now, there are going to be some of you out there go, hey, old mate, got a better idea. How about you put 98 Ron in it? I can't afford that. I love, while we're on this topic, hands up anyone out there. All right. You got a job, okay? And you're working hard, which I am. The other half and I are barely spending any time together at the moment. We're basically working a lot. We might get one day a week together. But anyway, imagine if you're working and you get people coming up saying, hey, you're working, you've got money. You can afford the everything. No, you can't. I don't know about any of my international viewers, but here in Australia, I'm paying for 91. So ordinary bog standard Aussie unleaded, 91 Ron, $1.69 a litre. And I've got a 75 litre fuel tank, right? Premium is up over $2 in my local area, right? So that would mean 150 bucks worth of fuel. I can't justify it. This is what, we've mentioned this before. If you can't justify spending the money on fuel, why spend it? If you've got the money to waste, go for broke. Go for buggery, fella. I'm not going to stop you. I personally can't justify it. So, anyway, let's head out to the, the Aussie Como. I know one viewer called it a spaceship. Really? A spaceship? What? The good old Aussie four-door family car is a spaceship. What, the Ford Falcon, the Holden Commodore, the Camry, the Magna at one stage, which was about as big as a V, VT, I think. A spaceship? Really? Clearly, the global knowledge idiot, which is one of, the, one of the comments I think he made, was that they're a spaceship. It's just a good old Aussie four-door family car. Most Aussies know that. Be you a Ford Falcon guru or a Holden Commodore? Well, they're not spaceships. Okay, you want a spaceship, got the old HZ Kingswood or HZ Prem with a 308 or 350 in the front. That is a spaceship. But anyway, I think will launch, particularly if you end up putting like an Edelbrock EFI kit onto the old 308 or 350. Holy moly. Anyway, um, let me grab the mobile phone. We'll head out to the Commodore. Whoa, Okay. So half an hour ago, the sun was out and it was dry and we were doing the video update about the front yep, front lawn. I come out here and it's freaking pissed down and it's still raining. And I've got the windows down on the Commodore. Oh, bugger it. Damn. Well, that was unexpected. Too late now. Anyway, so, update on the Commodore. Now, you'll remember I got this with... Uh, there's 250,000 Ks on the clock. All right. Oh, it's all wet in here. Hang on, guys. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Ugh. That was unintentional. Oh, I turned the radio off. Damn. Okay. So, how many Ks we got on the old girl now? I seem to have lost my, oh, there it is. So I got this with 252, 300 on the clock, and I've now got 266, 379. So not too bad, not too bad. If we go under the bonnet, now I have serviced this um, lately, and what came out was horrendous. Um, out of this engine from an oil point of view. Absolutely horrendous oil. Basically, it was water. It was like they dumped like 5W10 or 5W20 in it. Oh, I've got to get new gas struts. So we know that I did the radiator and everything. We have a Z154 oil filter down there. This is running Penrite oil, and I'll show you that in a moment. There's the compressor. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you the dent in the condenser because it's actually under here, but it's over here. And um, so it's dumped all its reefer out. So I've got to get a new receiver dryer 
unfortunately, um, and refill it up with gas. So I've got no AC whatsoever. I've still got to do the upper and lower heater pipes. And unfortunately, the problem I've got with that is I've got to get a set of those right angle um, freaking pliers because the um, spring clamps where you grab them right are up against the wheel arch it's in a mongrel of a position so i've got to get that done and apart from that the commodore is running like a dream guys um no problems with her whatsoever and uh she's got a little bit of bird crap on her at the moment but she's been running like a dream guys absolutely running like a dream um which i'm thankful for because you know, these are great cars. I mean, the only problem I have with the client or with the VY is the silly uh, park a lot and the bumper. But apart from that, these cars are just beautiful. Um, and she's been running like a dream. She really has been running like a dream. Um, you know, it, it's they're a great car. It's a spaceship. Gee, the global knowledge idiot is really an idiot. You see, how could you call this a spaceship? Just a good old Aussie family four-door sedan with a six-cylinder in the front. It's not like it's a freaking BMW 750Li. Um, so the oil that's in her uh, is Vantage 10W40, uh, fully synthetic. Um, she took six litres. She's a six-litre engine, and she took it all. I let the drain. I let the oil drain overnight. Um, the only problem I have with this, and if you saw it just there, is the location of the freaking oil filter. It's in an absolute nightmare spot. Um, but what came out of her was basically black water. It was really, really thin. It was 5W something, which these engines should be running at the bare minimum 10W40 as we know. So that's what I put in her, and a good Z154 oil filter, a proper Ryko. And then I just put a, um, what are they called, performance air filter or performer air filter from Repco. I couldn't justify putting a K&N filter in it. Um, I know people say, you know, when you're doing a service, you spend big on the oil filter and massive on the air filter and all this. It's whatever, you know. I can't justify it, to be honest with you. So there we go. That's an update on the old Como. And uh, she's running like a dream. And I really can't complain about her, guys. She is a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. Um, I've got to get that bird crap off there. It's one of the pitfalls with doing what I do for a living. So there we go. That's an update on her. And she's running like a dream. There we go. I'll definitely, I've got to get a new car aerial. I've already broken the car aerial. You can see there I've done the Aussie holding it together with electrical tape. So at least I've got a radio. But apart from that, guys, she she runs like a dream. Don't get me wrong, I miss the 80. But with what the other half and I have got going on at the moment, the Commodore is far more practical. And I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not, you know, I'm not being facetious. I'm being 100% genuine. With what's happening with the other half and old mate, the Commodore is far more practical. So, and again, it's safer, particularly if the other half's got to take it for something. It, I prefer her to be in that because at least it's got uh, was it, four airbags, ABS, cruise control, everything like that. Um, traction control, the whole lot. So, there we go. So, apart from now not having any air conditioning... And we all know old mate doesn't do well in heat. Um, everything else seems to work. I know some people are going to be like, old mate, what are you doing about the head unit? Nothing. Not a thing. Not changing it. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I didn't get to the mute button. And <coughs> I didn't get to the mute button quick enough. Apologies for that. Um... I, the other half's come up with an idea of maybe getting one of those um, uh, FM Bluetooth units that you connect your phone to it and then it transmits on like 89, 88.8 or 88.7 or whatever. That's probably what I'm going to do. Um, I 
I know most people's first thought, and I've done this, I'm guilty of this, new car, change the head unit. I listen to 3AW a lot. And if I don't, if I'm not listening to 3AW, I'm listening to SEN. If I'm not listening to SEN, I might try and find some music. Um, the whole reason about getting a Bluetooth kit for the car would be when the phone rings. So, but that's not exactly high priority at the moment. High priority at the moment is to do something about the AC, which I'll have to get done in the next week or two anyway. So there we go. Anyway, there we are. Midweek Wednesday here at Old Mates, all done and dusted. It's always a good thing, isn't it? There we go. That'll keep you going for a few days. I will be here for Pro Audio Fridays, so I'll catch you up this... I'll catch you up? I'll catch you around the channel this coming Friday, where we'll finish off my latest track. That's definitely on the cards. I'll give you the hot tip right now. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, guys. I'll catch you Friday. Have a good one. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.